Hello and welcome to Spotlight Tampa. I'm your host, Steve Overton. Thanks for spending some of your day with us. First in the spotlight, the phrase, you've come a long way, baby, is a slogan usually reserved toward marketing to professional women. But it also seems the perfect way to describe a downtown project once known as Tampa's Sleeping Beauty. I'm talking about the Tampa River Walk. The project took over 40 years and six mayors to complete. In our series, Discovering Tampa's Downtown Waterfront, Spotlight's Abby Feely shows us a few highlights from the Buckhorn administration's efforts to bring Tampa's grand walkway to life. One, two. The opening of Kennedy Plaza was truly a momentous occasion. Every mayor since Bill Poe took on some aspect of the unique challenge posed in waking Tampa's sleeping beauty, the Tampa River Walk. It's going to be quite an attractor, you know, and uh, I think this will be one of the busiest sidewalks anywhere you can find in the state of Florida. My grandchildren, which are already four of them are adults, so they're not necessarily little kids, uh, and their kids will be enjoying this. We started because of the bicentennial of the country. In 1976, it was 200 years old, and that was what the tribute was going to be from Tampa. And it took us a little while, obviously, but good things come those who wait. When I left being mayor the first time, I remember sitting across the river and looking at the skyline, and there were two tall buildings. That was it. And it's the first time it ever occurred to me, gee, I'm the mayor of the city, and I'm leaving. It's a wonderful place to be, wonderful place to live, to raise a family. The whole Tampa Bay area is just marvelous. People who live here and visit here will always equate Tampa with the waterfront. It changes the way people view this city. And so Tampa will always be known as a waterfront, riverfront city because people can actually access the riverfront. And that's, that's big. About a half a mile from Kennedy Plaza and just beyond the Strass Center for the Performing Arts, the last remaining piece of the Riverwalk was recently completed. The Doyle Carlton section of the project cost around $4.7 million and includes a patterned walkway, gathering areas, seating, art installations, and beautiful landscaping. Pedestrians walking from the Strass to Waterworks Park will have another spectacular view of Tampa's most precious resource the Hillsborough River. Here, strollers along the water's edge can see an abundance of public art. A monumental sculpture called America America by acclaimed artist Barbara Nezhna are among the spectacular art installations found along this stretch of Tampa's Riverwalk. Underneath Interstate 275, you can find a series of laminated tempered glass panels spanning 200 linear feet. This art installation is called Andante by artist Heidi Lippmann. The visually stimulating elements found along the Doyle Carlton segment make it a unique pedestrian experience. The very northern end of the river walk will be completed by the Heights project developer. Upon completion, it will be conveyed to the city to manage and maintain. The addition of this northern section will bring the total length of Tampa's river walk to over two and a half miles. This is not my accomplishment, this is our accomplishment. Mayor Bob Buckhorn has proudly carried the torch of developing Tampa's downtown waterfront. He truly believes the Hillsborough River is the heart of the city and understands what the completion of the Riverwalk will mean for Tampa. Once the developer in Tampa Heights finishes his portion of it, um, you literally will go from the North Boulevard Bridge all the way to Channel Side Bay Plaza on the waterfront, enjoying this amazing asset, the best asset that we have in our downtown. Hold on, because you haven't seen anything yet. This is going to be an amazing time for us. I would tell somebody in, in West Tampa, it's nuestro tiempo. Uh, this really is our time. And come on down and be a part of it. Enjoy it. It's your city, and this is your gift. The Tampa River Walk belongs to every resident of Tampa. You and your family are free to stroll and dine along the Tampa River Walk on any given day of the week. In our next installment in the series, Abby shows us how the River Walk could affect the city of Tampa for years to come. 
From storage containers in ancient Mesopotamia to decorative art in the 21st century home, pottery has followed human civilization since its beginning. Today, the art of ceramics finds its way to the heart of Ybor City. CTTV Sophie Millar takes us there. In the middle of Ybor City, what was once an abandoned bakery today gives a whole new meaning to the word glazing for this group of locals. Well, it started about 12 years ago. The building was empty, so they were looking for a space to open up new programming. After a bit of remodeling, the Ybor Art Studio was born. Bring this back so you can see what you're doing. Patricia Bohannon graduated from the University of South Florida with a degree in ceramics and was looking for a way to get involved in Tampa Bay's art scene. Well, I got very lucky. <laughs> Almost 10 years ago, she started working for the city as an art instructor on a part-time basis and has never looked back. I love this space. I love, you know, working for the city. I think that they provide a really wonderful opportunity for artists and people to come in and learn and grow and meet each other. It's a really wonderful thing. Throwing your first piece of pottery is an incredibly exciting experience. Thankfully, the Ebor Art Studio is open almost every single day of the week with classes always going on. There's really no break, and we offer a myriad of different classes, anything from painting and drawing to ceramic sculpture. Ybor City is a hub for tourists, and the studio's walk through gallery grabs a lot of their attention. Everybody here is an ambassador, so usually when people come in, if students see, they're always the first ones to point out where our schedules are and, you know, kind of direct. And the fun thing about it is that when you see that students have created these pieces in the gallery, it shows you that it's possible for anyone. Tourists aren't the only ones that make their way into the art studio. We have a lot of families that come here, and mothers, daughters, husbands and wives, and they all interact with each other. There's a whole community of people here that know and care about each other. And there's that commonality of art that they're making and creating. Classes come in many shapes and sizes. Some students have been a part of the class for years. Some are falling in love with their very first art class and some have known their instructors for pretty much their whole lives. Betty Bohannon is Patricia's mother, and she loves the time together with her daughter. I think we're much closer. Don't you think so, Trish? <laughs> now that she's retired, the pottery class gives Betty a creative way to learn and spend time with her daughter, even though she wasn't very sure about joining at first. She says I'm doing well. I was hesitant because I have a tremor in my right hand and she's worked with me real well as far as being able to stabilize my hands and my arms and she works with everybody in the class. I take a lot of pride in knowing that people want to come to this space and that they feel good here. It not only helps you as far as having the camaraderie with the people and being with family and friends and stuff, but it, it helps emotionally and I think it helps physically when you have some physical disorders such as arthritis or, or stuff like that. It's real helpful. Love this studio. I'm glad she's talked me into coming. Reporting from the Ebor Art Studio, this is Sophia Millar with CTTV. The Ebor Art Studio is a fun place to not only develop a new sculpting technique, but also to enjoy time with family and friends. Find out more about how to enroll in one of their diverse classes by visiting this website, www.tampagov.net, and click on the Parks and Recreation page. Maria Contreras Sweet, administrator of the U.S. Small Business Administration and member of President Obama's cabinet, made a stop at the Blind Tiger Cafe in Ybor City recently to discuss borderless marketplace opportunities for small businesses in the Tampa Bay region. The purpose of the visit was to promote small business exporting in the Tampa area. Spotlight's Chris Phillips was there. We actually are a client of the SBA. We got an SBA loan this year through North Star Bank. So we wanted to 
you know, uh, show the administrator what, 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 what have we put to use the good funds that they, get, that, that they actually bring us. Absolutely amazing. We actually were able to open a roastery, which is going to give us the ability to go vertical in our production for coffee. And we're going to open a new store in another neighborhood, which is an underserved area of North High Park, which is part of the uh, vision and structure for the Riverwalk uh, transformation and beautification. We want to continue to make certain that we're providing faster, more efficient solutions for small businesses. And so one of the things that they tell us is that they want to be able to start up their business in a day. You know, whatever we can do to help you site your business faster, get your loan faster, get your back room up faster, that that's one of the things that we can do in addition to providing you uh, general access to capital and access to markets. And so we started up a program that we call uh, the Small Business Technology Coalition, where we've gone across Silicon Valley, the East and the West Coast, and everything in between to identify businesses, national businesses or local businesses that can help you start your business faster. I, I wanted to paint a picture of what Tampa is uh, from the I, educator perspective for University of Tampa and University of South Florida with their entrepreneurship programs, with the resources that are available through the city and the county, and that we have a very thriving, very nurturing, and very healthy small business ecosystem. Um, without all those three things, you know, uh, we, we can't bring the city forward. So uh, painting the picture to the administrator is going to be kind of like the, the focus of the, of the whole meeting. What the mayor has done has been recognized in Washington, D.C. He is transforming the city. He is creating a path forward. And one of the things that we're talking about here and one of the reasons we wanted to connect it and chose you as a good example of what we're trying to do is that we all know that today out of the White House you hear that we are up to 76 months of consecutive job growth. That has never happened in the history of our country. I mean, without the Obama administration's support, we wouldn't have finished the Riverwalk. Uh, we would not have finished the I-4 connector that took all the trucks off of 22nd Street and moved them up onto the interstate. Um, the Choice Neighborhood Grant that allowed us to do the Encore project right outside downtown Tampa, those were all as a result of this administration's willingness to invest in our cities, not just my city, but cities all over America. And part of that has been the efforts of the Small Business Administration. But Maria has been a staunch, staunch supporter of the growth of small businesses, of breaking down the bureaucratic walls in Washington, D.C., of opening up avenues of capital and resources to small businesses like, like, like Roberto. Um, this administration, um, I will tell you in no uncertain terms, has been very, very supportive of Tampa. Trade is a substantial driver of Florida's economy. Exports from Florida help contribute to the $2.23 trillion of U.S. goods and services exported in 2015. A total of more than 61,000 companies exported from Florida locations in 2013, and more than 95% of those companies were small and medium-sized enterprises with fewer than 500 employees. The movement for environmental awareness has picked up speed worldwide in the last decade, with activists calling for everyone to take some responsibility for the future of the world more than ever. Tampa Bay is answering that call. Today, we will be riding the Cass Street Track, a part of Tampa City's Green Spine Project. Opening in June 2016, the two-way bicycle track will pass through downtown and give us access to so many of our favorite attractions like Riverwalk, the Tampa Museum of Art, and the recently opened Perry Harvey Park. The designated bicycle track, which runs between the sidewalk and the street, will give both drivers and cyclists peace of mind as the separated track and signals allows them to safely pedal from North Hyde Park all the way across to Ybor City. We will be starting our ride at Curtis Hickston to access Cass Street. A short jog along the sidewalk here will connect us to the cycle track by Poe Parking Garage. At many of the intersections, you will notice cyclist traffic lights, which are distinguished by their red, yellow, and green bicycle-shaped symbols. You will also notice stop bars on the track's pavements. As we cross the street, we can see a bright green paint on the pavement. These indicate that the cycle track is intersecting with a vehicle path. 
Cycling forward, we will cross Franklin Street where we will find access to the Tampa Theater and many delicious food options. We will pass the historic Florida Hotel on Florida Avenue and then arrive on Marion Street where we can find the Marion Transit Center. At Jefferson Street, not only will you find Perry Harvey Park, but you will also find the last cyclist traffic light of the journey. The newly built track provides us with a green and safe way to travel across Tampa on two wheels. But remember that safety begins at home, so always wear a helmet, stay alert, and be knowledgeable of Florida's laws and safety regulations regarding bicycle traffic. The track is only the second of its kind in Florida, and it's now open for your riding pleasure. Pick up a bike from one of Coast Bike Share's many stations and get pedaling across Tampa in your own personal bicycle lane. Being able to swim is an essential skill for anyone living in Florida, and the city of Tampa is doing its part to make it easy and fun to learn. Check out our next story about the world's largest swim lesson. Today is the world's largest swim lesson. All over the world, people are doing the same lesson, 30-minute lesson, and it's all about drowning prevention. That's the message that we want to send home today that swimming lessons saves lives. The City of Tampa has five facilities that is doing it. Um, we also are a part of the Hillsborough Water Safety Team. The YMCA has two going on and Brandon Sports and Aquatics, all part of that. And we uh, partner with St. Joe's Bay Care and the Children's Board. I have my daughter, she's six years old, Tori Jones, and she's learning to swim. It doesn't cost anything. Our department pays the fees to do the program, to be a part of it, and we want everybody to be able to come out and um, participate, and then to go back and find some swim lessons and keep it going. There is no such thing as drown proofing. You can't drown proof anybody. But at the end of the day, knowing the skills to swim, those are lifetime skills, um, being smart around the water, swimming where there's a lifeguard, um, knowing the facility, knowing the lake, knowing the ocean, um, and watching weather, all those things to do the right things around water. The City of Tampa offers swimming lessons at all 11 of our pools. Um, we have a variety of classes, morning, evening, weekends, and we start at ages six months to adult. $24 for eight lessons. And um, if you're interested, you can look on our website at tampagov.net forward slash parks and rec. Swim lessons are available all year long. Visit tampagov.net for more information. Well, thanks for joining us today for Spotlight Tampa. I'm Steve Overton. We'll see you next month.